Today we're in Rome, Italy. We're going to be zipping all around town to show you some of the best food this city has to offer. Roman food culture is all about bold flavours, fresh ingredients cooked simply and a passion for nose to tail eating. This is our first video from Rome and we're here to hunt down the best Italian street food. Watch out for Rome's most popular street food, hands down some of the best pizza in Rome and a whole lot more. In this three-part series, we'll show you Rome's tastiest food, from local favourites to heritage restaurants. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. This video is going to be all about street food here in Rome, but not just any street food. We're going to be showing you the best places to get the best street food. So we're going to be going all over town to get the ultimate dishes at the ultimate restaurant. So we're not rocking up to any old place. We're going to the best places. The food in Italy is really regional and we can't wait to show you Roman cuisine. Roman cuisine is known for using uh, seasonal ingredients cooked simply. They love nose to tail eating and the flavours are really bold and punchy. We're at our first stop and we're here for the king of Roman street food and that is supli which is a deep fried rice ball. We've got our bag of supli, we've come to a little park to enjoy it and oh, the smell of deep fried food. So this is the supli, it is quite weighty. So it's made up of risotto rice which is cooked with ragu which is a meat sauce uh, with a tomato base and then it has got a surprise in the middle, a big ball of mozzarella. So let's just break this open. It's uh, crumbed and then deep fried. Look at that mozzarella and that gooey ragu. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, the never ending. Oh my lord. I'm gonna break it off. Oh my gosh, that mozzarella is so gooey, stretchy, and in fact the supli is often called the supli al telefono because the string of mozzarella resembles the old-fashioned telephone cord and this is such a good supli. This place is known for doing really good supli, it's very popular with the locals and I can see why. The ragu has got a beautiful tangy tomato flavour. There's tiny bits of meat in there and the rice. Mm. It's so creamy. The inside is really gooey and soft. And then that crunch of the breadcrumbs. So coated in egg and breadcrumbs then deep fried. So it's really crunchy. What a snack! This would not be a street food tour of Rome without pizza. So the next stop is for probably what is the most popular pizza here in Rome, and that's Pizza Bianca. Bianca means white, and that's, so this is an incredibly plain pizza, but you've got to check out how good this is. That was an absolutely gorgeous shop. It's a family run business. It's got a beautiful traditional feel about it. Now this pizza you will find all over um, Rome. I mean, every third shop seems to sell it. But we went to that particular shop because it's a family run business and because it's meant to do an incredible version. And look at that. So when I said it's a plain pizza, I meant it's a plain pizza. So we got the scrocciarella style, which is the crispy bit. And all it is is a plain pizza base with olive oil and sea salt. So really, really simple. Mm. 
Oh, oh, that olive oil. You can see it all on top. It's so shiny. It's so tangy, the bread. And it's just got a nice chewiness to it. It's basically a quite fat version of the best pizza base you've ever had. And it doesn't need any more. That olive oil and the salt on top, it's the perfect combination. Oh, the chew, so good. And the olive oil, you can really taste it. And little bursts of salt as you hit the, hit the rock salt. Incredible. And this is super common. You see people munching on these all the time. We had it for breakfast, actually. We went to our local market, got a slice, had it with an espresso for breakfast. Look at that. Look how crispy it is on the bottom. So it's nice and soft and chewy on top, super crispy on the bottom. A really neat feature of the streets of Rome are these water fountains, they're called Nassone, and they're all part of the ancient Roman water supply network. And you can just fill your bottle up with super fresh, cold water, and these are everywhere. So it's a really handy way to keep hydrated because now we've got a big bus ride to go a long way to the other side of the city for our next stop. up our pizza game so in Rome you can get two kinds of pizza you can get tonda which is like a whole round pizza or you can get pizza al taglio which is pizza by the slice and that's what we've come to our next stop for now all the research points to this shop as being one of the best places to get pizza by the slice in the whole city many delicious types of pizza to choose from it's really hard to make a choice now with pizza al taglio what they do is uh, you buy it by weight so you just indicate how big of a slice you like they weigh it and then that's how you pay for it this pizza looks crazy good let me talk you through while we ordered so this one here has got uh, prosciutto crudo, which is uh, thinly sliced uncooked ham. There's some blobs of mozzarella on there. I think some balsamic vinegar hiding under that arugula or the rocket. And then we asked for her, her favorite pizza, her recommendation, and we got given this uh, pizza here. And this is Fessa de Manza, which I believe is actually uh, beef. And then there's some more mozzarella, there's pecorino, the cheese um, which is sprinkled over the top there, then some rocket as well, and then it was garnished with a slice of orange. Let's give this prosciutto one a taste. I'm gonna get this nice juicy middle bit here. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my word. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Ah, the prosciutto is very, very intense. Quite salty and almost has got a sweetness to it. The balsamic is quite tangy. That mozzarella is super, super creamy. But the crust, oh, the pizza, in fact, the pizza dough is incredible. So this place is famous for having popularized Teglia Romana. So that's the practice of fermenting the dough for a really long time so that when it cooks, it rises in the pan but it also has a really crispy bottom. And the bottom is super crispy and crunchy. I gotta go for another bite. Oh man. Mm. It's that balsamic which is adding that sweetness. Oh man, it is amazing. I can't get over how crispy and crunchy and full of flavour that base has. Oh. Mm. Oh. This one's a lot more subtle, but still really vibrant, very flavoursome. But it's more subtle than the prosciutto one because the prosciutto was so intense. This mix, so cured beef, very light. The punchiness comes from the pecorino romano. So in Rome, 
the use of pecorino is everywhere like it's in a lot of the pasta dishes a lot of on top of a lot of the pizzas and it's a really sharp pungent hard sheep's milk cheese and it is beautiful mm. I can really taste the rocket too it's very peppery it sort of balances it out so it's got a pepperiness and it's a little bit um, sort of refreshing I suppose in contrast to that meat but that base it's awesome it's so chewy It would not be a street food tour of Rome without gelato, so that's what we're doing next. However, don't skip forward because you think, ah, oh, boring gelato, I've seen it before. Yep, we've all seen it before in Rome, but they're not all made equal. You've really got to find the good stuff, and that's what we've done. We've traveled back all the way across town for an incredible gelato spot. We ate here during our research for this series. It's incredible. Amazing. Let's go grab some. I'll tell you why some of these places stand out soon, but I gotta get in and eat this before it starts melting everywhere. It's about 30 yeah. degrees here today, centigrade. So I've got dark chocolate orange here with big bits of um, sort of candied, I think, orange in there. And this one in the middle is a sorbet, and that is um, apple and mint, just to really freshen things up. But let's go dark chocolate orange. Whoa. Wow. Oh, it's so bitter. Oh, that is full of flavor and the orange flavor is very strong. I love that orange chocolate combination and that absolutely nails it. Mm. Oh. oh, a big bit of that orange in that mouthful. It is ridiculously creamy, that gelato. Unreal. Apple and mint. Wow. Wow. It's very, very um, light in texture, so it's almost like a slushy, a slushy style drink. The apple and mint flavor are not too crazy. They're, they're quite subtle, so it's just a nice freshness. Oh man, it's hot today. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Just a really fresh apple flavor, and then that, that mint is just, just coming through. So it's not actually, I thought it would be very full of mint and bursting with mint flavor. It's not too much, it's nice and subtle. So why come to particular shops to get gelato like we spoke about before? Because there's a big difference between each different shop is why. So some shops they use powders and premix stuff. Other shops like this one, they do it all. They get fresh fruit, they peel it, they put that into the sorbet. They use nuts that they've roasted. They do all the prep themselves. So it's incredibly fresh, incredibly natural tasting. Whereas other places can be full of chemicals and colorings. Like you might get a mint gelato and it looks like Kermit the Frog. You don't want that. You want it to be subtle and then bursting with natural flavor. So definitely find an incredible fresh natural gelato shop like this one. It's unreal. Next snack is from a bit of a Roman institution. It's a place called Filete de Bacala, and they serve one thing and one thing only, and that's deep fried pieces of salt cod. If you're ordering takeaway like us, you just walk straight through the restaurant, right to the back, and put your order in the kitchen. I've got my golden piece of salt cod in front of me. So this place behind me is a bit of an institution. It's been around since the 1950s. And it is, this is literally all they sell. And I think you can get a salad if you're eating it. But most Romans just head out the back and grab a piece of salt cod to take away. So let's taste this thing. Mmm. Wow. 
The batter is so crispy and crunchy. I think he was twice frying it because it is so, so crispy, that batter. I didn't get much of the fish that time, so I'm just gonna maybe break into it a bit. Look at that salt cod and get more of that fish. Mmm. Oh, it's beautiful. The flesh is really moist and that beautiful salty flavour. So with salt cod, what they do is they um, preserve the fish after salting by drying it. And then in order to make it ready to eat, what they do is they have to rehydrate it and um, remove most of the salt. So they um, soak it in cold water for one to three days and change that water two or three times a day to get most of the salt out. But the saltiness, or a lot of the saltiness, still is retained in that fish and it is just such a unique flavour. This has been such a great day of eating Roman street food. <laughs>